We started Twitter with a very simple idea. We started because we wanted to see it. We loved it. And we kept building it because we wanted to see other people use it. There's a series of moments. There's no one big moment. And each time it was like, oh, that's happening? Well, that means this other thing might happen. And then who knows what might happen next? We just never thought it would go this way. And I, I honestly think that's part of the reason why we succeeded. It's such a simple tool, yet people have done so many amazing things with it. We're really able, we made an investment. It's a perfect company, but nobody inspired us more than us. You're able to have these multi-directional conversations. You're not just broadcasting, you're there in the middle of it. <laughs> I'm going to make history here as the first president to live tweet. I'm using Twitter to send pictures and thoughts from space. And every day, I really enjoy reading your tweets. There's an incredible leveling of the playing field that gives every voice the ability to echo around the world instantly. And that democratization of content creation and sharing facilitates these connections that we see every day around the world that we would have never seen before. The possibilities and the opportunities afforded by the platform are, are limitless. I want to start by giving you a brief introduction to Twitter. Twitter was founded in the spring of 2007, and today we have over 2,300 employees in more than 15 cities around the world, although most of our folks are still in our world headquarters in San Francisco. We also have more than 230 million global monthly active users, and I'll talk more about our users and growth later on. Twitter was born as a simple 140-character mobile messaging service and has really evolved into an entirely new way to create, share, and distribute content. The 140-character constraint turns out to be particularly well-suited to mobile use and drives a high velocity of information exchange, making Twitter uniquely suited to live, in-the-moment consumption. Anyone can tweet and anybody can read tweets, and this has essentially created a level playing field that has democratized content creation and distribution. As a result, Twitter enables a single voice to echo around the world instantly and unfiltered. How big is it? Cumulatively, there have been over 350 billion tweets published on Twitter since its creation. It took over three years and two months for the first billion tweets to be sent, and now we send over a billion tweets every two days. Additionally, we've seen tremendous organic growth in our users, particularly internationally. As I've mentioned, we now have over 230 million global monthly active users, and 77% of those users are international or outside the United States. Interestingly, 76% of our monthly active users primarily access Twitter on a mobile device. What makes Twitter unique? We are the only platform that is all of public, real-time, conversational, and widely distributed at scale. No other platform combines all these elements at scale. Let me walk you through each of these individually, and then I'll, then I'll take them together collectively. What do we mean by public? Everything on Twitter is broadcast for the world to see. It's not just shared between you and your friends, it's seen by everyone. So whether you're an NFL quarterback, an investor, royalty, or just an internet user who loves the Red Sox, Twitter is a powerful platform to share and broadcast information with the world instantly. So that means when people want to get a message out as broadly as possible, they come to Twitter to do so. When Carl Icahn wanted to announce his investment in Apple, as you can see in the middle of this slide here, he did so on Twitter rather than on any other platform because he knew the world would see it and everyone who did see it would rebroadcast it instantly. What do we mean by real time? When events happen in the real world, they happen digitally on Twitter. Twitter is the place to go to find out what's happening right now. When this U.S. Airways flight landed in the Hudson River, Twitter user Giannis Krums was one of the first people to arrive on the scene in this ferry and tweeted this photo of his account of the rescue. 
His now famous tweet was then broadcast around the world. The mobile nature of the platform and that 140 character constraint make it easy and compelling for users to share content and news as it happens, in the moment, wherever they are, and for other users to see it and consume it in that moment, wherever they are. For this reason, Twitter users receive content faster than on any other form of media. When we talk about the democratization of content creation and sharing, nowhere is that more clear and evident than in the kinds of conversations that occur on Twitter every day. In this example, one of our users, Susan Mitchell, is cooking at home and tweets to the world-renowned chef Mario Batali that her red sauce uh, seems bitter. Mario responds to Susan, and not only that, but musician Gavin Rossdale jumps into the conversation, and Mario then follows up and responds to Gavin. So when we talk about these only on Twitter moments, this is one example of the millions of these kinds of unique conversations that happen only on Twitter. Conversation on Twitter is not just between two users, but between companies and brands and their customers and users. Here, when user Garrett mentions Nike running in a tweet about a run he just took, Nike replies with a tailored motivational image just for him. This is a perfect example of why I tell marketers that you have to think of the conversation as your canvas. And brands have long talked about one-to-one -one marketing, but it has largely been a myth until now. And the reason that it works so well on Twitter is because a brand can reach out directly to a customer and earn their loyalty through that direct connection but because the interaction is broadcast to the world, that direct, content is, direct contact is very high leverage for the brand. A final element we'll discuss here is distributed. Because the tweets are public, they can be distributed anywhere and everywhere, and we provide a number of tools to enable publishers to do just that. In addition to display on our owned and operated properties, tweets are displayed on third-party clients, and on numerous other media properties across the landscape of the web and the mobile ecosystem. So, for example, when President Obama declared his 2012 presidential election victory, he did it on Twitter, knowing that it would be instantly distributed everywhere. And this tweet here was shared not only with his almost 37 million followers at the time, but it was retweeted over 800,000 times. And it also appeared on the Today Show and numerous other broadcasts, and even on the front page of this German daily the next morning. In fact, here's a great visualization of President Obama's tweet announcing his victory and the subsequent 800,000 retweets on our platform that occurred around the world, reaching an additional 25 million people. So as I say, when events happen in the world, the event itself and the conversation about that event unfold on Twitter. In fact, in Q3 of this year alone, there were 48 billion online impressions of tweets off of our owned and operated properties. And that's just online impressions. That doesn't include any of the impressions in print or the many on-air mentions of tweets every day. In fact, a recent third-party study found that 44% of Americans hear about tweets through media channels other than Twitter each day, and that sets up a discussion of our platform partners that I'll dive into in a bit. Combination of these four elements, public, real-time, conversational, and widely distributed, form the foundation of our value proposition to each of users, our platform partners, and advertisers. Let's talk about each of those in detail in a Twitter the user experience is our highest priority and of paramount importance. Everything that we do flows from the user experience that we provide. We empower our users to do things that is not possible on any other platform. This tweet here about the Kenyan elections in March is a perfect example. We are the premier platform for public self-expression. Because tweets are 140 characters, they flow seamlessly and frictionlessly between 
the most sophisticated and high bandwidth devices in the world and the weakest signals in the farthest corners of the world. Our platform gives anybody the opportunity to engage in public conversation. Users can engage directly with each other or, as in this case, contribute to a global conversation like hashtag Kenya Decides. In terms of unique content, we are the place where journalists go to break news and share stories, where local politicians and heads of state engage with their constituents and each other, and where comedians, celebrities, and athletes make direct connections with their fans, unfiltered by any intermediaries. In fact, the spectrum of content on Twitter spans all domains. When I talk about those direct connections, Twitter brings you closer to what interests you the most by enabling you to discover and consume only the information you want to see with people, brands, and organizations in ways that are uniquely possible on our platform. In fact, the accounts that a user follows create what we call an interest graph. In other words, the social graph is a map of me and all my, all my friends, and we're friends with each other and mutually connected to each other. The interest graph, on the other hand, is a graph of a user's interest and the things that they follow, even though they might not be mutually connected to those people, organizations, or companies. And I'll talk about the power of this asymmetric follow graph when I discuss advertiser targeting in a bit. Now, let's talk about our platform partners who are so important to the value proposition for our user experience. We are a completely complementary distribution platform for our partners, and our platform partner philosophy has two components to it. First, we enable our platform partners to bring great content onto Twitter. We are a distribution channel for these partners to enable them to expand their reach beyond the users of their own property. Secondly, our platform partners leverage Twitter content on their own properties to enhance engagement with their existing users. We provide a set of tools that enable our platform partners to integrate Twitter content and functionality the same way that YouTube enables you to embed YouTube videos on a site, and we call this functionality Twitter for websites. When Oreo tweeted, you can still dunk in the dark during the power outage at the Super Bowl, that tweet went viral very quickly. And thousands of websites embedded the tweet and the story about its virality on their own properties. Here on the right of this slide, you can see the tech website Mashable embedding the tweet on their site. And users and visitors to this site could do anything with this tweet that they could do to a tweet on Twitter. They can retweet it. They can reply to it. They can favorite it right there from within the tweet. Partners can also embed widgets, like the tweet button at the top of this page that was clicked on over 3,000 times to allow visitors to this site to tweet this article out to their own followers. And then finally, to close the loop, we recently rolled out this headlines capability that you can see at the bottom of the left-hand side of this slide, which helps users see where the tweets are going, the thousands of properties around the world where this tweet was embedded. Talk about the fact that tweets are constrained to 140 characters. Increasingly, that 140 character message has become a caption to a much richer canvas that follows the tweet anywhere it goes, and we call that canvas Twitter cards. By enabling Twitter cards, platform partners can ensure that whenever any user tweets, from their website or application, the tweet will automatically include rich content like a news summary, if it's a news article that's being tweeted, the photo, as in the middle example on the screen here, even the videos like this six second vine that's attached to the Lowe's tweet. And this cards platform allows users to consume rich content without leaving their home timeline on Twitter and allows for rich media integrations to travel with the 140 character caption the tweet, wherever that tweet goes, across the entirety of the web and mobile landscape. I want to focus for just a moment on one powerful example of a media vertical uniquely positioned to leverage the full value of our platform 
and that's television. TV has always been social, whether it's the people we're talking to sitting next to us on the couch or at work the next day around the water cooler. And because Twitter is public, real-time, and conversational, broadcasters have increasingly found that Twitter is the perfect complement to TV as a tool to drive engagement and aggregate attention around what people are watching right now. In fact, broadcasters regu regularly promote us for free. In June of this year alone, there were Twitter integrations in 60% of the primetime TV shows. And in the most recent Super Bowl, half of the 52 national TV uh, advertisements included a Twitter integration. The key to our relationship with TV is this notion of live reach. People seeing and interacting with tweets about a program while it's on air, making Twitter the social soundtrack to TV. This chart here shows the volume of tweets about a particular TV show that occur in the run-up to the show, during the show itself, and in the aftermath of the show. You can see the spikes in the volume of conversation on Twitter during the show. As a result of graphs just like this, broadcasters increasingly leverage our platform to drive discovery and tune in in the run-up to a show, make sure their viewers are engaged in conversation on Twitter during the show, and leverage the platform for measurement after the show. Here's a great example. When Nick Walenda walked across the Grand Canyon on a tightrope, the Discovery Channel included a Twitter hashtag Skywire in the upper right hand corner of the screen. And this integration drove amazing results. Skywire and related hashtags generated over 1 million tweets from users ranging from an ESPN analyst to a CNBC reporter and even brands taking advantage of this unique opportunity to engage in product placement. Those 1 million tweets generated 175 million impressions. And when ESPN analyst Robert Flores choked about Nick's pants, Lee Jeans jumped into the conversation with this tweet, bringing a whole new meaning to product placement. And again, when I say to brands, the conversation is the canvas, this example of connecting in context to something that people are talking about right now is precisely what I'm describing. Our partners, our media partners, see significant value in using our platform to drive engagement and tune in. And as a result, they bring their unique rich media content, such as real-time instant replays, onto our platform for free. On top of that, our Twitter Amplify program allows us to combine this unique rich media content from our TV partners with a six-second advertisement providing new revenue streams to our content partners and to Twitter. We've additionally partnered with Nielsen to introduce the Nielsen Twitter TV rating, a metric which will measure social engagement around TV viewing, providing a 360-degree view of the audience, both those watching on air and those conversing about the program on Twitter, to broadcasters and marketers. And what enables this metric to be a standard is that it's provided by an independent third party, not Twitter. And it's perfectly auditable because the tweets are entirely public. Anyone can see the tweets and verify the results. This metric drives content creators to put more of their content on Twitter and drive more conversation on Twitter because this helps improve their ratings for this metric. We think this combination of engagement, discovery, tune-in, and measurement makes us a uniquely compelling partner for television. Okay, I've talked to you about how our users and our platform partners create this incredible ecosystem of content creation and distribution. Now let me talk to you about how our advertisers leverage our platform to achieve powerful new ways to market their brands and communicate their message, and specifically letting me walk you through four of the key value propositions we offer to advertisers. First, native ad formats. A promoted tweet appears in a user's timeline just like any other tweet. We pioneered this native in-stream advertising format and it has quickly become an industry standard. Additionally, a promoted tweet, just like any other tweet, 
goes wherever the tweets go and looks the same across platforms, whether it's shown on a smartphone, a tablet, or a web browser. And as a result, with the secular migration to mobile devices, mobile has already become the primary driver of our business with more than 71% of our advertising revenue generated from mobile. Secondly, we provide our advertisers with powerful targeting. Earlier, I talked about the interest graph. Because our follow model is asymmetric, in other words, again, I can follow another user without requiring them to follow me back, our users regularly add and remove accounts from their follow lists in ways they might not if they were mutually connected to those accounts because of the social friction in removing a mutual connection. So this asymmetric graph that's pruned and edited regularly provides advertisers with a real-time signal of a user's interests as those interests evolve and change with time. The old way of targeting ads was to get as much demographic information about a person as you could possibly collect and attempt to infer the user's interests. Twitter, through this explicit interest graph, provides a next generation of targeting. And in fact, advertisers can target users on Twitter across a number of dimensions, including the interest graph, keywords that a user tweets about or engages with, what TV ads the user may have seen, we can even allow advertisers to target users that look similar to a particular set of followers. The third element that advertisers value on our platform is connection in context. I gave you the lead genes example earlier. Because Twitter is public, when advertisers see relevant conversations surface on Twitter, they can engage directly in these conversations and advertise products and services to all the users engaging in the context of that conversation. In this example, a group of users are tweeting late at night with the hashtag, why can't I sleep at night? And Zequel takes advantage of this by responding with a tweet of its own. These kinds of conversations regularly occur on Twitter, providing advertisers with countless opportunities to, to connect in context to the users having these conversations. Zequel is able to engage here with these users in a way that is unique to the Twitter platform around this notion of the conversation as the canvas. Finally, earned media, which is one of the most powerful components of our advertising platform. Twitter is incredibly attractive to advertisers because of the viral nature of the platform that can extend the conversation beyond a paid campaign for a promoted tweet. In this specific example, Starbucks promotes this Valentine's Day, two for the price of one drinks. This tweet is retweeted over 21,000 times, as you can see in the lower left corner of the screen, providing Starbucks with the ability to spread this promotion beyond its initial set of targeted users to reach 9.7 million more users at no incremental cost to them. This earned media boost the ROI of promotional campaigns on Twitter through the powerful multiplier of retweets when users share the message with their own followers. All right, we think we've only just scratched the surface of everything Twitter can become. We have aligned our growth strategies around our three primary constituents, our users, our platform partners, and advertisers. We see significant opportunities to grow the business along each of these three dimensions, and we have a number of exciting initiatives to help us do just that. First, our users. There are over 2.4 billion connected people worldwide and over 230 million global monthly active users of our platform. So we are less than 10% penetrated across the globe. And while there is massive global awareness of Twitter, we need to bridge the gap between awareness and deep engagement on our platform. We're working to make our products easier to use and adding a number of new mechanisms to drive this much, much deeper engagement. Additionally, we continue to focus on expanding in new geographies by having teams on the ground internationally help drive unique regional content onto the platform. Secondly, our platform partners are that critical part of the virtuous cycle I talked about that will help us grow our user base and the overall value of the platform. 
we plan to continue to leverage our extensive media relationships to drive more content distribution through Twitter. For example, we enable our media partners to broadcast real-time, unique second screen content onto Twitter. Here, in the middle of this slide, the NFL tweets a preview of an upcoming game. The tweet helps drive tune-in for the game and provides a unique slot for a six-second pre-roll ad that's a new revenue stream for the NFL and Twitter. We're very excited about the quality of the content partners that we have engaged with on Twitter. In addition to our partnership with the NFL, as you can see here on the far right, we recently announced a partnership with Comcast that even allows users to click a tune-in or DVR button to select live TV shows from within a tweet. So the Twitter stream starts to become a remote control for TV. Finally, another significant growth opportunity for us is driving growth among existing and new advertisers. Our earliest advertisers, large brand advertisers, are typically the hardest to reach, and we have 94 of the top ad age 100 advertisers advertising with us so far this year. And while we continue to grow revenues from these large brand advertisers, we believe our newly launched self-serve ad platform and our entry into real-time bidding through the acquisition of Mopub will allow us to significantly increase our number of advertisers in the small business market. Not only are we making it easier for more advertisers to advertise on our platform, we're offering new products to address the entirety of the marketing funnel. We initially focused on driving awareness at the top of the funnel, but we see a significant opportunity to move down the funnel and broaden our service offering by moving toward those direct response and lead gen advertisers that we see at the bottom of the funnel. And that's a great transition to talk once again about the power of Twitter cards. We're very excited about the opportunity for cards to provide new advertising formats that will address those direct response and lead gen advertisers. In addition to allowing advertisers to place photos and videos and media into a tweet, cards now allow our advertisers to distribute products, provide lead gen opportunities, and download apps through promoted tweets as you see in the examples on this slide. We think these new advertising formats will increase both demand from advertisers and engagement from our users. I'll talk briefly about the team. We've assembled an incredible senior management team with a spectrum of deep experience across the media and technology industries. So before I hand it over to Mike, I want to step back for a moment and say that when this service was created, the focus was on the simplicity of the 140 character tweet, and we had no idea that it would evolve to become the global, world-changing communications platform that it has become. A service that has eradicated all sorts of barriers to communication. Barriers of socioeconomic status, barriers of geopolitical boundaries, barriers of celebrity. And we are humbled by the opportunity before us and inspired by the ways in which our users converse on Twitter every day. And with that, I'll say thank you very much and hand it over to Mike. Thanks, Dick. I'm excited to be here today to talk about our financial performance and our operating metrics. I will be taking you through what we've achieved to date, how we measure our business, the investments that we are making to drive our long-term success, and finally, where we think we can take our business in the long run. First, let's talk about where we are today. Twitter has achieved significant growth and scale. In the nine months ended September 2013, we generated $422 million in revenue more than double what we generated in the same period in the prior year. Advertising, which is our primary revenue stream, accounted for 89% of our revenues. Our data licensing business accounts for the remaining 11%. I will focus my time on talking about our primary source of revenue, advertising. We started to monetize our platform through advertising in 2010, and the business has grown rapidly since then. Advertising revenues grew 247% from 2011 to 2012, 
And even as our revenues have grown to meaningful scale, we have seen advertising revenue for the first nine months of this year more than double on a year-over-year -year basis. Underlying our ad business are three key drivers, reach, engagement, and monetization. We measure the reach of our platform in terms of our active user base, or monthly active users. We measure engagement by looking at timeline views per MAU. And finally, we measure monetization in terms of ad revenue per thousand timeline views. I will now walk you through each of these key metrics in detail. Let's talk about reach. We've grown MAUs at a steady pace, and we exited Q3 with 232 million average monthly active users. This represents 39% year-over-year growth. In terms of geographic breakdown, 53 million, or 23% of our MAUs, are in the U.S., compared to nearly 180 million, or 77%, that are outside the U.S. We are focused on growing our user base. There are over 2.4 billion global internet users, and in just a few years, there will be over 3 billion smartphone users, according to most forecasts. As such, we have a fairly open-ended market opportunity for user growth. Now, let's talk about engagement or timeline views. On the screen behind me, you see a user's home timeline. This is where our users consume the tweets from the accounts that they follow. A timeline view is generated by a user when they log into our site, when they refresh their home timeline, or when they view search results in a search timeline. We see strong growth in timeline views. Total timeline views grew 50% compared to the same period in the prior year, reaching 159 billion. Growth in timeline views was driven by a 39% increase in the number of users on our platform and an 8% increase in timeline views per MAU, which grew to 685. Now, before I turn to monetization, I want to take a minute to explain our ad products. We have three ad products, promoted tweets, promoted accounts, and promoted trends. As Dick mentioned, the power of our ad products is that each of them is completely native to the core Twitter user experience and the ad content appears within the organic content on our platform. Promoted tweets and promoted accounts are pay-for-performance products that are sold through an auction and priced on a cost-per-engagement basis. Our other ad product, Promoted Trends, is priced on a fixed fee per day basis, and they can be purchased either globally or on a country-by-country -country basis. The majority of our advertising revenue comes from promoted tweets and promoted accounts. The pay-for-performance nature of this advertising creates an attractive value proposition for our advertisers since they only pay us when a user engages with their ad. And it aligns our interests in delivering relevant and engaging ads to our users with that of our advertisers. With that background, let's turn to our monetization metric. Our goal is to maximize long-term value for our users and our advertisers. Ad revenue for timeline view reflects the aggregate impact of the engagement of our users and the decisions we make around optimizing user experience and delivering value to our advertisers. Ad revenue per thousand timeline views increased 49% from Q3 2012 to Q3 2013. We see a notable difference in monetization between U.S. and international markets. In Q3 of this year, we generated ad revenue per thousand timeline views of $2.58 in the U.S. compared to $0.36 cents internationally. International modernization represents a significant opportunity for growth, as 73% of our usage is international, while only 26% of our revenues are generated internationally. In order to capture this opportunity, we are expanding our direct sales efforts internationally, and we are planning to launch our self-serve advertising platform abroad. As you can see from the growth in our business, our investments are working. We increased our operating expenses by almost 100% in the first nine months of the year. This investment has enabled us to improve our product for our users, launch our cards platform for our platform partners, and grow our sales force and launch our self-serve platform for our advertisers. We have also increased our capital expenditures to expand our co-located data centers and our office facilities, with the goal of ensuring that our infrastructure can scale as the level of activity and the volume of content on our platform grows. I should point out 
that a portion of our capital expenditures are financed through capital leases. Let me now turn to profitability. Even throughout this investment phase, we have been profitable on an adjusted EBITDA basis. While we have maintained our profitability over the last six quarters, and we've seen margins grow to 7% for the first nine months of this year, the magnitude of our investments has limited our margins. We believe we have the ability to significantly expand our margins as we see returns on our investments. We have a significant opportunity ahead of us, and in the near term, we will continue to invest aggressively to capture this opportunity and position ourselves for long-term success. While it is still early, we are starting to see nice returns from the investments that we are making across a variety of areas, including television, self-service advertising, and international expansion. Over the long run, we believe our business has the potential to have an attractive cost structure with meaningful operating leverage. We anticipate having gross margins in the high 70% range and adjusted EBITDA margins around 35 to 40%. With that, I want to thank you for taking the time to learn more about Twitter.